Mary Ellen O'Toole is a former FBI senior criminal profiler. She joins us now from Washington. She has 25 years' experience investigating mass shootings, including the Columbine massacre. Good morning. Good morning. So how is this different through your eyes because you've seen so much? It's different in, in a number of ways. First of all, we have a female shooter. Uh, we have a... Um, an attack that's extremely well organized. It's really mission oriented, massive firepower. Um, it was very strategic and it had a very definite um, escape plan. Um, and there was no suicide at the end or suicide by cop. And that, those three things to me are the most remarkable because it does suggest to me that after this shooting occurred at that event, these shooters intended to go someplace else because they could not at the end of the day go home and take their six-year-old baby, six-month-old baby away from their uh, mother-in-law and call it a day. Something else was probably going to happen. Uh, does this in any way suggest um, terrorism or we don't know motive, but they're not ruling out terrorism? Do the events like That's this right. say what to you? That's right, they do. Um, and I think um, terrorism certainly has to be a, a very important consideration here as the fact pattern begins to evolve and tighten up. It, it did occur in a venue where um, the male shooter had, you know, had fellow empl employees, had colleagues. So it, there are some who say this was very personal. That may be true, but it also may have made it a softer target for him. I don't believe, based on how strategic the plan was, that he had a fight and then the fight precipitated the attack. That doesn't make any sense at all behaviorally. The fight or the disagreement that people have described, if in fact that did occur, could have been staged. But the plan itself overall was extremely strategic, well thought out, and that would have taken days, weeks, even months to put together. Yeah, and that is exactly what the San Bernardino police chief is saying to Mary Ellen, that it's highly unlikely that, that an argument caused this, that they were so well planned that they were dressed, he had an argument, he goes home and then he comes back with his wife. His co-workers describe him as reserved, polite, that he appeared to be living the American dream, that he and his wife had recently married and had this six-month-old baby. What do you make of that when you hear about this, this couple being involved in this? But I hear that all the time. If you come across as quiet and, and normal, uh, people accept you as being non-threatening, mm -hmm. but you don't know what goes on behind closed doors in someone's home. So those are simply trappings of normalcy. They're not indicative of violent or possible threatening behavior in the future. My experience has been that um, the general public does not know how to read for signs of dangerousness. And clearly in this case, if these two individuals wanted to carry out the attack that they did in fact carry out, they're going to uh, behave in a normal, quiet, um, 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 be able to get along type of fashion with other people because they don't want to have this, this uh, mission interrupted. Um, so that those trappings of normalcy are not indicative of future violence. Marilyn Tool, thank you so much. You're very welcome.